What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with the final video in our creating and decorating a gingerbread house series. So if you remember, this is a series that we've been going through to practice working with different things inside of SketchUp. So everything from modeling our house to using extensions and also not extensions to create the di different decorative things, things like that. So in this video, we're gonna add all of the different candies to this so that we can kind of finalize the way that this looks. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so first things first, most of these things you can create without extensions. Um, the one exception is we're going to be putting little candy canes on the corners here, and we're going to use the extension Fredo Scale from Fredo 6 in order to do that. So I will link to that in the notes down below, as well as to a tutorial about the way that Fredo Scale works. And so what we want to do is we want to start by modeling out the little candy cane pieces that are going to go on our corners. So in order to do that, we're just going to activate the circle tool by tapping the C key. And I'm just going to make sure I did group everything in here so things won't merge together. But what we want to do is we want to draw out the diameter of our candy cane. So in this case, we'll say this is going to be like 3 sixteenths of an inch. It doesn't really matter. And in fact, I'm going to move this off this wall just a little bit so we can see what we're doing. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to adjust the number of segments in here because we're going to use the hidden geometry in here to apply our materials. We don't want to have too many. So I'm going to drop this down to maybe like 12 segments. So just click on this circle, go into your entity info and, and uh, type in a value of 12 in your segments. That's going to reduce the number of segments in this object. Then we're just going to use the push pull tool to extrude this up to right here. And that's a little bit bigger than I expected it to be. So maybe what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna undo that. I'm gonna select this circle and we'll just scale it down by like 0.5 or something like that. So we'll make it a little bit smaller. And then we'll just extrude it back up again. That's probably a better diameter. So I'm just gonna extrude it until it's level with this. And then what we wanna do is we wanna go to view we want to turn on our hidden geometry. You can see how when we turn on our hidden geometry, what this does is this lets you see the individual faces um, on, this, um, on this cylinder. And what we want to do is we want to apply a red material to every other one of these. That's what's going to allow us to create kind of a candy cane look. So we're just going to fly around here and apply that red material to every other one of these faces. So you can see how now we have our candy cane in here. Well, the problem with this is candy canes usually spiral from a color standpoint. Like they usually don't just go straight up and down. I'm gonna turn my hidden geometry back off. And so what we need to do is we need to twist this object, which is why we have the extension Fredo scale in here. So what we wanna do is we wanna use the extension Fredo scale to twist this. And there's a tool inside of this extension called box twisting that's really good at this. And so what box twisting does, and we're gonna go ahead and right click on this. We're gonna make it a component. We'll call it candy cane and we're just going to activate box twisting in here and you can see how what box twisting does is it gives you a number of different little boxes that you can click on well, when I click on this what it's gonna ask me to do is it's gonna ask me to set a base point and then if you look really closely you can see how this is actually twisting this object so in this situation, we want to go ahead and we'll set a rotation angle of, we'll call it negative 180 degrees for right now. So you can see how what that did is that took this and it twisted it 180 degrees. So that's twisted our geometry in here, but because we'd applied those materials, now these materials that are on these faces are now twisting around our candy cane. So now our candy cane is set up and ready to go. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this object so that it's centered on the corner point. And so in order to do that, I'm gonna find the inference point for the center, which does not seem to wanna to show up. There we go. So we're gonna click on that and we're just gonna center this on this corner. And we're just gonna use the move tool in copy mode in order to copy this so that it's centered on the back corner. And then we can just do a shift click to select both of these. Use the move tool in copy mode again to create a copy over here. So just remember when you have the move tool active, just tap the control key in order to turn copy mode on. And so now what we have here is we have our gingerbread house that has the candy canes on every corner. And so now what we wanna do is we wanna draw our candies that are gonna run along the face here. 
And so I'm gonna, the way that I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna draw a sphere. So I'm just gonna draw a little circle right here. And then I'm gonna draw another circle in the center, but I'm gonna tap the left arrow key to lock it to the green axis so that I can draw a circle that's perpendicular to the other circle that I had. And the reason we're gonna do that is because we're gonna select this, then we're gonna use the follow me tool to extrude this to create a sphere. So just click on this center circle, click on follow me, then click on this option. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna create a sphere. And one thing that it's having a little bit of trouble with is I think it's a little small. So sometimes when you have a smaller object like this, SketchUp has trouble filling in all of the different faces. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a little trick where I select both of these and I scale them up by a factor of 10. Then I'm gonna click on this, use follow me to create my full sphere. And I like to go ahead and triple click on this sphere and make it a group. And then we're just gonna take this whole thing or maybe just the sphere and we're gonna scale it back down. So if you ever have an issue where, and we can delete out this circle, but if you ever have an issue where you're not getting faces created, it's probably because your object is really small and SketchUp has trouble handling that sometimes. But what we wanna do now is we've got our sphere, but we don't want this to be a sphere, we want this to look like a little candy. And so in order to get this to look like a little candy, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the scale tool. So I'm just going to select it, tap that S key, then single click on this face, and I'm going to scale this down. So you can see how when I scale this down, all of a sudden this looks like a piece of candy, almost like an M&M or something like that. And we're probably going to have to reduce the size of this, but we can do that in just a second. First, let's draw a guide on this face and actually I put it on that other face, which is fine, but we just wanna draw a guide so we have something to inference to. And so one thing I find helpful when I'm trying to place objects like this is turning on hidden geometry because it gives me more inference points. And so what I'm doing is I'm finding this central point and I'm single clicking on it and I'm gonna put it on this line. And sometimes it's easier to move it up and then across like this to align things. So a lot of the time it's a lot easier to align things by moving them along um, one axis, then another axis, then another axis, instead of just trying to get your points to line up. But this needs to be scaled down even more. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna scale this down so that it fits on this face right here. And so what we have is we have a candy that's running along this face right now. Now we just wanna use the move tool in copy mode to create copies of it. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna find, and I'm probably gonna turn x-ray mode on and turn my hidden geometry back on so I can find this point, but I'm gonna use the move tool and I'm gonna select this point right here. I'm gonna tap the control key to turn on copy mode and then I'm gonna move this so that the copy that I create is centered on this intersection point of these guides. So when I click, what that did is that placed a copy right here. And I'm gonna turn hidden geometry back off so you can see this and x-ray mode back off. But now what I can do is I can type in a value of, or I can type in a divided by and the number of copies I want. So in this case, if I type a value of 10, that'll give me 10 equally spaced copies between this point and this point. So you can see how placing these in here gets really easy. And then what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna want to make a copy of these over here because we want them to run down this face as well. There's a few different ways to do this. I'm actually going to do it a different way than I usually would. I'm gonna right click on this and hide it. And then I'm gonna select all of these M&Ms. And one thing that may be faster um, thinking about it now is you may wanna go ahead and apply your colors now. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna apply colors to these so I don't have to come back in and do that again later. But you can see how every other one of these, I'm, or every third one of these, I'm applying a color. And I'm just doing that now because that's gonna be a lot easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply these colors. And then now we'll go through and we'll select these and we're gonna use the rotate tool in copy mode to create a copy 90 degrees across here so that we don't have to remodel those. So we're just gonna activate the rotate tool, click on this point, move your mouse down so that you're on this point and click again, 
Then you can see how I can move these across. Well, what I wanna do is I wanna tap the control key. That puts me in copy mode and that allows me to create a copy. Then I can click one more time in order to finalize these. And so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna unhide our top M&M. And the one thing I didn't really think about is that one would be a different color. So let's say that we had one blue M&M. Um, so now we've got our M&Ms along the front face in here. And if you wanted to, you could put them all in a group just to make them easier to manage. So we could make this a group. And then not only would that be easier to manage, but then you could also copy that group across here. And we can just align this so that they're on this back face. So now we have them on the front and the back. So now there's two more things we need to do. We need to put like a little peppermint in the middle right here, and we need to add little pieces that are gonna run along the top. So I'm gonna start by doing that. And so the way that I'm gonna do that is I want these to be almost like a bell shape. And so there's a few different ways you could do this. In this situation, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna activate the circle tool, tap the up key, to lock this to the blue axis, and then we're just gonna single click and we're just gonna draw a circle. So when we draw a circle, that's gonna give us our base shape. And we're just gonna push pull this up just a little bit. And so usually what these do is these um, taper inward. So we're just gonna select this face and activate the scale tool. We're gonna scale this in a little bit. And then we're gonna use the push pull tool. We're gonna push pull this up some more and then use the scale tool to scale this in. We're gonna push pull it up some more and we're gonna scale it in again. And then maybe one more time, push pull it up. And then use your scale tool to scale this in again. And so this is close to what I want. It's a little tall. And so the nice thing about this is because all of this geometry is in here is kind of sticky geometry. You can take it all and you can move it up and down in order to adjust your shapes. You can see how by selecting these circles and moving them up and down, I can adjust the way this shape ends up looking. So I'm just gonna move this down. We'll type in a value of 1 32nd. And so you can see how this is pretty close to the shape of those bell candies that you get in here. We're gonna go ahead and leave this as is. You could get more detailed with your candy if you really want to, but I'm just going to Activate the erase tool and hold the shift key. And we're just gonna hide the geometry associated with these lines so this looks a little bit smoother. And so now what we have is we have our candy piece that's gonna run along the top. And so I'm just gonna triple click on this and right click and make it a component. And we'll just call this a bell candy. Then we'll just do the same thing we've done before. We use the move tool in copy mode. And I'm just going to use this corner as a base point and we're gonna make a copy that kind of aligns with where we want this to be. And then I'm gonna type in divided by, and we'll try 12 for right now. Let's say 10. So you can see how when I typed in divided by 10, I hit the enter key, this created 10 copies of these. And so now we can go in and we can add our colors. And so now we've added our Skittles, candy to the front. We've added our bell candy to the top. And if you wanted to, you could maybe move those down so that they kind of intersect with this face. In a real gingerbread house, you'd have icing in here so they wouldn't be just sitting on the top. So that's something that we could kind of adjust and change if we wanted to. So it'd be fairly simple to just select all of these and then move them down a little bit. But then the last thing I want to do is I want to draw like a peppermint wreath on this front face. And so I'm gonna start by drawing a guide with the tape measure tool so that I have a line to draw along. And then we'll just draw a circle in here. And we'll call it this size. And so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna push pull this out a little bit. And then I'm just gonna draw on the face some curves. So I'm just gonna use the arc tool. And I'm gonna draw a curve just like this one. Well then, I can use the rotate tool in copy mode 
to create copies of this line. So just select this, tap the Q key, click to set your base points, and then tap the control key in order to create your copy. And we're just gonna type in a value of times eight or something like that. So when I type in a value of times eight, that creates copies of this. Well, now we can come in here and we can add red to these edges. There's a lot more you could do. You could come in here and you could uh, kind of like bevel off the edges or something like that. I think we're gonna leave this fairly simple for right now. The only other thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna draw some edges in here to split these faces up. And we'll just use the rotate tool in copy mode again. Type in times eight, hit the enter key. And then we're just gonna fill the reds in. like this. And then we can erase out this guide. So like I said, we could do more with this, but this gives you a pretty good idea of how you can come in here and model out something like this peppermint really easily. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Like I said, it's intended to be kind of a practice exercise for different modeling methods. So feel free to uh, go out and be creative and create something to follow along. I just love to hear what you guys thought about this exercise. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.